The Destiny 2 Forsaken DLC announcement ultimately asks one question. How much are you willing to pay to get the game you should have received at launch? I don't mean this cynically, it's a matter of fact statement. Unquestionably, the content that was showcased looked great, or at least to someone like myself who loves Destiny. The trailer reads as though it's a tick box of every community wishlist item. Weapon slot changes, random rolls on gear, an awesome looking PvEVP game mode, a raid with more bosses than ever before, 9 new supers for our subclasses, a better approach to collecting items and tracking game progress, it's all there. Now I want to start by saying that I really respect the work that the people at Bungie have clearly put into this. I'm very critical of the game in its current form, but I know video game developers work very hard and put in very long hours for not enough pay only to have annoying people like me use my platform to say things like, hey, that's not good enough. This is a tension that I carry internally as a games commentator, since my priority is always to be honest with my audience about what I think, where game developers don't have the right of reply that they certainly deserve. Clearly, the team at Bungie have been listening and working, and if this DLC delivers on everything promised in this trailer, which is a big if, then it's going to mean very good things for the future of this game. But the commercials for this, the business side of it, are the real question mark. In order to play the Forsaken DLC, you need to own the Destiny 2 base game, which is fine, but for some completely unbelievable reason, you need to also own the Curse of Osiris DLC and the Warmind DLC. This is unfathomable, but we'll come back to that later. In addition to all of that, the Forsaken DLC costs 40 US dollars on its own, making it the same price as the Taken King. Many people will argue that this should be free as a goodwill gesture to the community after a disappointing launch and months of playing a game that was objectively worse than Destiny 1 in almost every way. I don't share this view. I think that this is a meaty update from the looks of it, and I don't mind paying a fair price for a fair product. If this update is anything like what the Taken King was, that will be $40 very well spent in my view. However, in addition to this DLC announcement, Bungie also announced the Annual Pass, which is simply a rebranding of the Season Pass concept. It provides you access to three minor DLC updates, which trigger new seasons in Destiny, so we can expect them roughly every three months after Forsaken launches on September 4th. This annual pass is 35 US dollars on its own, and we have no idea what actual content it contains other than a few bullet points on a slide. It lists things like endgame challenges, new items, new entries in your record and lore lists, etc. But to be clear, these will not be story-based DLC like we've seen in the past. During the live stream, Bungie said this. I would say that to set your expectations for this right now, we're leaning harder into the things that keep you coming back to the game week over week, month over month. Uh, it's activities, it's action, it's challenges, it's things to earn and collect. We're not leaning as hard into cutscenes or cinematics. Obviously we're telling a story, mm -hmm. but it's a story that you'll discover in moments of action, the reason we play the game, and uh, things that we can collect, and our understanding of the world that you're creating will grow over time through the annual pass, and you'll be building on the great story that you're telling in Forsaken. In our previous DLC drops, we used to get all of the things listed on this annual pass page, as well as story stuff, for basically the same price as they'll charge us in future. The only way that this would be palatable is if the annual pass content is so numerous and so impressive that it makes up for the absence of story-driven content. We have no way of determining that yet, but you can pre-order it now. I think the annual pass is the big story here because it's a move that aims to monetize what we used to get for free. Previous updates like the April update and the Age of Triumph already added everything you see on this page, but it did it for free. And we had smaller free updates like Crimson Doubles and Sparrow League Racing. When we paid money, we got beefier, story-driven updates that moved the Destiny world forward. That's no longer the case now. And the cherry on top is that you can't pick and choose which parts of the annual pass you will purchase. You can't buy the second and third DLC drops only if that's what interests you. You have to buy the whole annual pass for $35. No exceptions. So if the first DLC sucks, well then it sucks. And you've paid for the other two regardless, so bad luck. 
I said earlier that I was happy to pay for the Forsaken DLC because I think it represented value, at least based on what we've seen so far. And I don't think that giving away that DLC for free was the way for Bungie to show any contrition for a shitty launch product. I think the annual pass would have been the chance to do that. It would have been possible for Bungie to say, hey, we've got a great DLC here that we think is worth a price tag. But in addition to that, we're going to give you a year of free content that includes all of this stuff because we want to say thank you to our community for sticking with us. That didn't happen. This, in combination with the decision to force people to purchase old DLC that nobody wants. Terrible DLC, at least in the case of Curse of Osiris, since I know a lot of people really liked Warmind. Forcing people to buy this old DLC when you're serving up new shit is mind-blowingly anti-consumer. I'm about to head to E3 and I'm aware of a number of new game announcements that you'll soon hear about. A number of those games are taking vastly different approaches to their DLC and Season Pass models than we've seen before. Stuff that is way, way more consumer friendly than we're seeing from Bungie and Activision. And that's before we look at stuff like Warframe, who are just about to drop a huge story-based expansion and guess how much that costs? That's right, it's free. Now, I know I'm very caught up in the dollars and cents here, but for me, this announcement solidified in my mind that Bungie and Activision are uninterested in adopting more consumer-friendly stances and are in fact doubling down on their existing practices. Year 2 in Destiny 2 will cost you more than Year 2 in Destiny 1. If that sounds good to you, then fair enough. But we do need to keep things in perspective. People are spending hundreds of dollars on Fortnite skins and thousands of dollars on CSGO knives. Value is relative. I'm not going to tell you that this DLC and annual pass isn't worth the money because if you're a fan of Destiny, it probably is worth the money. And if you're not a fan, then it probably isn't. My point here is one that was recently made by my friend Mtashed when he was speaking about the Iron Banner emotes being sold on the Eververse. We don't care about $10 when there's enough goodwill in the bank. And right now, for a lot of people, that bank is empty. So all these dollar signs attached to this new announcement really sting. Now, I want to reiterate that I really liked what I saw in this trailer. The Gambit PvEVP mode was especially great, where two teams are doing separate PvE activities in combination in a race against the clock, and people can invade each other's maps to disrupt the other team. All of that sounds fucking awesome, to be honest. I will play the shit out of that because I've wanted to see a game mode like that in various games for years. The promise of a new raid with more bosses than ever before is also exciting. Like many others, I really didn't enjoy Destiny 2's raid because it was full of frustrating, gimmicky encounters that tested patience more than skill. If we can get back to a Taken King style raid full of awesome boss encounters, then that's absolutely a great thing. But it is difficult to shake the feeling that many of the updates we're seeing simply get us back to where Destiny 1 let off. Random rolls are back, showing that fixed perks were a mistake. Weapon slot changes have been implemented and expanded on, showing us that the 2 primary system was a mistake. The record book is back, the collections tab is back, the grimoire is sort of back and improved. All of this is fantastic and I'm honestly excited about it, but we just need to be real and honest and just recognize that we should never have lost this stuff in the first place. Destiny Forsaken is a retreat to the best parts of Destiny 1 and the fact that we're excited about that says a lot about where Destiny 2 is right now. In my review of Curse of Osiris, I said that it felt like the long marathon we'd run in Destiny 1 had really only led us right back to where we started with the launch of Destiny 2. Forsaken is without question that cycle continuing. It's taking a disappointing game and hopefully, if the DLC delivers, making it a good game. But of course, We've run that race before. That really brings me back to the point I made at the start of this video. Forsaken ultimately asks how much you're willing to pay for the Destiny experience you deserve. I won't make that decision for you, since you have your own sense of what's valuable and what's not. I will be playing this DLC to offer a considered view of it, but that review won't be out until mid to late September, after I've had the chance to experience all it has to offer, and I can offer a full view. I'm not going into it holding any grudges. I think anyone that's seen my coverage to date knows that I'm more than happy to call out the good just as much as I call out the bad. Right now, there's actually a great deal to be excited about within this announcement, so long as you're willing to make the financial investment. I hope for everyone's sake, Bungie's included, 
that the investment proves to be worthwhile.